Hello there. Just coming home from a little stroll in the rice fields. A little bit hot today. It's actually quite quite rainy today, but it's uh, still nice and warm, which I appreciate. Got an email from a from a customer, a long time customer, and she was telling me about <laughs> about the long cold uh, season in Denmark and how it's been quite difficult to get through it. And I must say, I do I do remember uh, the long cold <clears throat> uh, periods. Of, of coldness and darkness in Denmark and I remember before we left to move here uh, people would say oh you you miss the the seasons I thought no well, maybe must have made almost six years away and <laughs> I can affirm that I absolutely positively do not miss the seasons I like waking up to varying degrees of sunshine every day that's a that's a real luxury um, okay so I spoke a little bit about Bitcoin uh, in a video yesterday there was a lot of receiving a lot of questions from people asking about what it was going to do is it going to go up should I sell my Bitcoin and and I think uh, it's important to remember that in a situation where you're uncertain um, you're rather you're feeling uncertainty regarding a decision it's it's likely due to a lot of interference from from other people so a lot of people are perhaps posting information on social media about whatever about Bitcoin going to the moon or Bitcoin correcting or whatever whatever it may be and um, and that is uh, that is that's a really really a uh, good way to get derailed um, relative to your own beliefs so it's important it's really important to remember that that you have to uh, stay your course because if your initial um, uh, hypothesis for for buying any asset is still valid well then it's still valid um, but you certainly do have to focus on on the facts and the facts are things that you would normally use to make trading decisions like um, I mean, what does the structure of price look like? Um, where is the market now relative to uh, liquidity? And you can you can see this by by looking at a, a price chart. And so yesterday I, I looked at a price chart on uh, four time frames on the four hour, the daily and the weekly chart. We kind of went over um, some of the different scenarios uh, for what Bitcoin could do, um, focusing on the facts. Okay, and technically, um, we we have reached we have reached a very very premium price. We're a weekly supply at the all-time highs, and so we can expect some kind of a pullback, um, a shorter-term pullback. And I'm saying this with a, a relative degree of confidence because of the structure of price. Uh, Bitcoin currently has as it approaches these historically respected um, levels uh, the all-time highs it's standing on uh, what's known to be as a liquidity void which means we have uh, a gap in price uh, we have um, a price window that is void of liquidity and when liquidity is not present that means that prices will move through it with great ease uh, currently we've seen that as prices have, has, have moved higher into the the weekly supply and we've poked up to the top uh, to the all-time highs and you can guarantee that there's a lot of liquidity uh, nestled up there people are looking to get out of their long positions at these historically um, identifiable levels and so technically speaking we are looking to correct the thesis for holding uh, Bitcoin is the halving that's coming up very soon and I also touched on this in the video and essentially the halving means that um, the supply of Bitcoin will likely um, slow down. Uh, when, I mean, when I mean slow down, I mean that the rewards for mining Bitcoins are going to be reduced by 50%. And so there are likely some, um, some individuals or organizations or outfits or whatever um, that are perhaps going to reconsider um, their mining efforts because the reward is much less. And so in a situation like this, when you can see or rather when there is a likelihood or, or, or potential for people to stop mining Bitcoin, well, this could potentially cap the supply. Maybe we won't even end up mining all of the Bitcoins that are available uh, because by the time we get closer to the max number of Bitcoins, that, um, the rewards will be so small that it won't even be anyone, worth anyone's while. And so if you consider the Bitcoins that were lost because people lost their private keys, I I eyeballed that as being maybe 5 million Bitcoins. That brings us down to 16 million Bitcoins total. And then let's say that 
there's another 3 million bitcoins that uh, will be lost because they won't get mined because the rewards will be too small. Well, that reduces it to 13 million. So we have a hard cap, a potential hard cap of, these are fictitious numbers, just to just give you an idea, of about 15, um, sorry, 13 million bitcoins. Um, and so in a situation like that, it's, uh, it's super important to realize what that means relative to the, the whole concept of, of supply and demand theory. And if you have the supply of something and the supply contracts, uh, the demand for that asset will typically increase. Okay, so if you have a lot of something, it's in abundance, the value of it goes down. So when you, when you, when you can see with great confidence, like we can with Bitcoin, that there is a hard cap, originally 21 million Bitcoins, maybe we lost a few, maybe there's 16 million, um, that can be bought and sold and maybe three million uh, less because people aren't going to mine the remaining bitcoins that brings us down to about 13 million bitcoin that's a that's not a lot if you consider how many people actually want bitcoin so this is going to have a huge huge influence on on the price of bitcoin people are going to be racing to buy it anyway but you can have a look at that video on youtube it's a public video you can just grab a hold of it and have a look at it if if it uh something that interests you um, and that's that. I'm going to leave it for that today. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And I wish you all the very best. Thanks.